welcome back to You Made It Home for another episode of Fry DIY. I'm coming to you today pre-recorded because of course we are closed today for Christmas, but I still wanted to show you guys a fun DIY that you can make at home with your pets. So I don't know about you all, but at the end of the year I tend to get really sentimental and like to kind of mark that year. And so in order to do that, today I've decided to make some really cute paw print keepsakes that you can make with your pet with the items that you probably already have in your pantry. So let's jump in and take a look at what ingredients you're going to need. As far as ingredients go, we really could not get more simple. All you need for this DIY is some sea salt, some flour, and some water. And I'll put the measurements for this on your screen, but keep in mind that I am making mine for a small cat, so if you have a larger pet or you plan on making multiple paw prints, you'll want to double this recipe as needed. Now that I've got my ingredients all set up, I'm going to start adding them to the bowl and combining them. I'm going to start with the dry ingredients, so I have about half cup of flour, which I will add to my bowl. Then I'm going to take my salt. The more finely ground your salt is, the better for the overall result in the end. If you have really coarse salt, it is going to make your dough a little bit chunky. This one could definitely be finer, but it's what I have on hand and it'll certainly work. So I'm gonna add that half cup of salt. And then lastly, I'm gonna add the water. Now all that's left to do is mix it. I'm gonna start by mixing it with a regular spoon and then I'll kind of begin to knead the dough once the ingredients are combined. It's gonna produce what feels kind of like a thick batter or dough. So now that the mixture has kind of started to thicken, I'm going to go ahead and just go in with my hands and knead the dough. So now that I've kneaded the dough, I've got this compact ball. I'm going to go ahead and start forming the shape that I want for my paw print. So I'm going to go ahead and just flatten this out a bit. And I do have enough dough here that I could probably pretty easily do at least two paw prints and I do have two cats but one of them is uh, not willing to participate so we are just gonna make one today you can roll this out with a rolling pin or you can just flatten it out with your hands and then you're gonna want to cut it into the size and shape that you like you can use the top of a cup or a jar it'll really just depend on the size of your animal and therefore the size of the paw print I'm just taking this little bowl that I have and I'm gonna press it down as if it were a cookie cutter. So then I can go ahead and just remove the excess and now it is time for the fun part and that is going to be to get your animal's paw print into this dough. So in that last clip you probably saw me trying to get Winston's paw print on the counter which did work but I don't know why I did it that way. If you're gonna do your pet's paw print probably a good idea to do it on the floor where they're more comfortable. So it did work, but I thought we could do a little bit better. So I went ahead and did one on the floor with him and was able to get this cute little paw print. I put it on some tin foil so that it won't stick while it's drying out in the oven. And now I'm gonna go bake it. My oven is set to 200 and we've thrown our paw print onto this cookie sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven for about two to three hours, which I know sounds absolutely crazy but we do need this to be entirely dried out and baked all the way through. And the last thing I'm gonna do before I throw it in there for that two to three hours is I'm gonna make a hole in the top of it because I'd like to hang my paw print. If you're not planning on doing that, you can totally skip this step, but for me, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you can use a few different things to make the hole, anything from a straw to a pen. I'm actually gonna be using the end of this mechanical pencil to do it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and punch out the little hole right at the top. And I'll clean out the hole to make sure that it punched all the way through. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bake that for that two to three hours until it's nice and dry. So it's been a few hours and I just took this guy out of the oven. It's looking pretty good so far. And so the final few steps are gonna be to let it cool and then decide if you would like to paint your paw print or not. You absolutely don't have to. I actually kind of like how it looks right now, but if you're interested, you can paint it using any kind of paint. I would recommend probably using acrylic or even chalk paint to fill in the paw print, paint the background, and you can even add your pet's name on there. 
I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna paint this one. I'm leaning towards no, but I do have an example of what one looks like that is painted. I made this one back in 2016 for my dog. So you can see it's much bigger, but I just painted the inside of his paw print black, the background white, and then added his name and the year on it. So the last step for me on this one is gonna to be to add a little bow so that I can hang that by the top of the paw print. So I went ahead and put a little bit of red ribbon through the hole in the top of the paw print, tied that in a knot, and then hung the whole thing from my mantle. That's all for me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a fantastic new year. Bye!